Welcome to the Hannacast, everybody. My name is Christian Hanna. Welcome to the podcast. Be sure to like this video so that more people can get this video recommended. Subscribe uh, to the channel if you haven't already, and also hit that notification bell if you want to be notified of future videos. Today, we're going to be talking about a bunch of topics, including that of, uh, l like, Kevin Feige has apparently teased the plans of Phase 5 of the Marvel Cinem Cinematic Universe. The Illumination CEO has has defended Chris Pratt's casting as Mario. Colin Trevorrow says he didn't know Therizinosaurus was an herbivore when writing Jurassic World Dominion. Christopher Nolan's new movie Oppenheimer is now in post-production, and Fall Guys is now in Epic Games for free, and we're going to be playing along with it, considering it's uh, my first time playing Fall Guys. And by the way, this is not sponsored. I just wanted to try this out. So, yeah, guys. Uh... Let's just get on with the podcast, shall we? Uh, now, I will say, if you want to, uh, if you want to support me financially, uh, go to ko-fi.com slash christianhanna, or go to christianhanna.com. It'll direct you to my link tree, and there's a direct tipping option there. Uh, huh. You can follow me on Twitter at the Hanacast, and also, if you want to buy some merch, go to christiansreviews.creator-spring.com. With that being said, like I, like I said, let's just get on to the topics. Um, now, Phase 4 of the MCU has been very interesting, to say the least. Uh, I, I've, I've been liking it. I mean, de there's definitely a few things I've loved uh, in this... In... in Phase 4 so far, like, I loved Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, I loved, uh, you know, what was it called? I loved Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and I definitely loved, uh, oh yeah, and I also loved Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and I w definitely loved, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. But... I will say one thing that's interesting is that there doesn't really seem to be, like, at least as far as I'm concerned, not an overall path as of yet. Uh, some things, ha like, there are individual storylines within the MCU, like, you know, wh going from Black Widow to, uh, to Hawkeye, or going from, like, WandaVision to... Uh, yeah, yeah, from yeah, from One Division to No Way Home to Doctor Strange: The Multiverse of Madness. But yeah, this like it, it it's it's been it's been a lot more experimental than usual. Um, but like really, I think the like the one like the one kind of MCU project so far that has truly like less no like or at least like I don't know it's hard to say but uh apparently Kevin Feige himself has said that there is a plan uh and this is this is from an interview he did on on yeah on Total Film it says to yeah it says total f yeah total film wait oh yeah let's go to the US version yeah uh, the article says this. Marvel fans love looking ahead, and Marvel Studios love encouraging them with breadcrumbs. For the moment, however, Marvel Phase 4 isn't quite leading to a big endgame in the same way Phases 1 through 3 of the Infinity Saga was punctuated by Thanos' pursuit of the Infinity Stones. But Kevin Feige has a plan. He always does. As part of the new total film cover feature for on Thor: Love and Thunder, the Marvel Studios the Marvel Studios president has teased that the that some answers are coming sooner rather than later. As we are nearing the end of Phase Four, I think people will start to see where this next saga is going. Confides Feige in the new issue, which oh wait, uh, this is just, that, that part's just an advertisement for total film. He says, "I think there have been many clues already." 
there are at least apparent they they are at least apparent to me of course uh, of where this whole saga is going but we'll be a little bit more direct about that in the coming months to set a plan so audiences who want to see the bigger picture can see a tiny 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 bit m more of the road map now this is now a lot of people are saying oh well that means he's doing secret uh, war, like secret wars. I'm like, hold your horses. I mean, he didn't say anything about secret wars. I mean, I do think it might be leading to that, but he didn't out like outwardsly say this is leading to secret wars. That being said, however, um, granted, I, you know me, I'm not a comic guy, I don't read comics, so for all I know, like, I don't really know that much about Secret Wars, all I know is that it's, like, the biggest Marvel thing ever, which I, even I will tell you, when they do Secret Wars, it is going to be, um, nowhere near as big as it was in the comics, I mean, even when you look at, uh, a lot of the Marvel, the, the MCU movies so far, they've taken ideas from the comics, but they don't do direct translations. They just take the ideas and take those ideas as a jumping point for what they're doing as a movie. I mean, Civil War was like this. Infinity War was like this. Uh, so I wouldn't. I, I, I if you so I'm willing. If you're really wanting to see like a direct translation of the you know, Secret Wars comic to the big screen, you're going to be disappointed because it's not going to be like that. Uh, but I'm looking forward to see what they do in the future. Like like I said, although I will say, as we're nearing the end of Phase 4, man, this is a really... I mean, granted, we've had like a bunch of... Like, like how many projects have we had? We've had... Like, let me... Actually, let me... Look it up. It should be here somewhere. Because uh, I know I saw this one little graphic that I kind of liked. Uh, within the past month, that's probably accurate. Uh, where is it? Because I know there was like a little thing. I know it's on my other computer, but I, but I can't really go get that right now. I, let, me, yeah, let me just... So, let's just get ready to pull this up. Quarter 2022. Yep, this is it. Let's just pull up this photo, shall we? Yeah, this is where the MCU is right here. Uh, this is uh, from this is this was made by 4AJ on Reddit. 4AJ on Reddit. Uh, and he does up, or they, they, I, I should probably say they, cause I don't really know exactly, uh, what gender they are. Uh, they, uh, they've been updating this quite a bit and like, I mean, overall, like it's really cool. Now let's see how many projects there have been in the MCU so far that, that have, or are currently going. We have one, two, three, four, five, Thor hasn't come out yet. So, yeah, five... So, we've already had five movies. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So, yeah. Twelve projects all together so far. And again, Thor, Love, and Thunder is just around the corner. Like, when did this come out? Uh, yeah. Uh, July 8th. So, like, w that's a lot. Especially... Uh, in... In less than two years, we have, like, we already have more projects 
made than Phase 3 of the MCU combined. Now, granted, uh, this person has Agent Carter and the Daredevil show, like, the anything with Daredevil canon, I, although I still think... I don't know about Agent Carter, but, uh, but really, uh, with, um... With Daredevil, I I still think you know given the clues that we've had in both like really mainly in um in what was it in Hawkeye where when Kingpin showed up it's like it was the same actor but it wasn't quite the same character because he had di like and I'm, I think that's what they're doing with Daredevil here it's like it's the same you know actor it's still Charlie Cox playing Daredevil. But I don't think it's the same character, per se. So, yeah. And so far, like, this person is actually... But, yeah. Like, we, like... But regardless, we're 12 projects in. And, uh, like, I'm, I don't exactly know when Phase 4 ends. Exactly. This person's saying that Fantastic Four and Blade aren't part of Phase 4. But is that true? It, are, are they not part of Phase 4? So, again, I'm not exactly sure. But the fact that there's still so many is really fascinating. Oh, wait, this is going to be updated here in a bit because we actually do have a date for I Am Groot. And we actually have a sort of, or at least a rough, a, a rough look at Loki Season 2. But yeah, but what I found really interesting is that this person actually managed to predict a Thunderbolts thing from happening. Like, predicting a Thunderbolts thing. Now, Rise of the Mutants, uh, Nova, and World War Hulk, those aren't confirmed, or like, those haven't been predicted yet. Although, Shang-Chi 2, and Deadpool 3, and Captain America, those are coming. So I think this person... But although, although they did say rumor for Rise of the Mutants, Nova, and World War Hulk. But I, I don't think those are... I don't think those are coming out. Although Thunderbolts was a very good guess. But regardless, uh, what do you think of what Kevin Feige says about Marvel Phase 5? Uh, wh where do you hope Phase 5 goes? Uh, let me know your thoughts. All right, guys. The next topic we're gonna be talking about is uh, you know the Mario movie. Like everyone, you know, laughed when it was announced that Chris Pratt was gonna be playing Mario in the upcoming Marvel Mario movie. This, uh, I think it's coming out this December. Uh. And, and apparently during what I'm guessing is, yeah, Cine Europe, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what Cine, Cine Europe is, but I'm guessing it's like a film conference. Uh, but basically he had to say this regarding, uh, the whole Chris Pratt Mario backlash, uh, regarding uh, this is what Deadline says. Regarding any upset over the ca over casting the non-Italian Chris Pratt as Mario in the upcoming Super Mario Brothers movie, uh, Melodandri asserted, when people hear Chris Pratt's performance, the criticism will evaporate. Maybe not entirely. People love to voice opinions, as they should, he added. I'm not sure this is the smartest defense, but as a person who has Italian-American heritage, I feel I can make that decision without worrying about offending Italians or Italian-Americans. I think we're going to be just fine. Uh, like, speaking of the partnership on that film with Nintendo, Mila, Mila Dandry called it the fulfillment of a really important objective. Nintendo is one of the companies we respect and hold in high esteem. This collaboration, I think, is unprecedented in its closeness. Uh, so yeah, I mean, granted, I mean, here's my thoughts on the whole Mario, the, the Chris Pratt as Mario thing. I mean, while it was a really funny meme and it's just, especially that, that, like, 
Chris Pratt as an, was announced as the voice of Garfield in a Garfield movie not long afterwards just made it even just made the whole thing even more funny. Um I don't really have an issue with it, really. And uh, regarding the whole why not just get an Italian guy? I mean, I don't know if like that's very very specific. Like it's not like I mean, how do I describe it? I mean, I'm pretty sure uh, like uh, how, how I, like, how do I describe, how do I describe this? But it's like, it's not like casting a white person as a black person or, or a cisgender person playing a transgender person. I don't think it's anything like that because like, I think the problem, like, I don't, I don't know if, you know, saying an Italian should be playing Mario is, is the equivalent, like would be like equivalent to that because those things are way, like way more obvious in why maybe, you know, uh, the people playing those roles should be those people. But like with Italians, I mean, are Italian, like uh, Italians aren't really at a disadvantage here, I mean, there's still main, there's still mainly white people, so I don't really get that. Now, <coughs> sorry. Now there are some. Uh, now, granted, there are people who who are just like, I mean, why Chris Pratt? That sounds like the most generic voice ever. I don't know. I think like, I th I'm fine with him. I mean, it's not what I. W he's not what I would have picked, but I mean, he. I mean, he's gonna be good. I mean, it's Chris Pratt, but. Now, some people, now, I will say, some people are saying, you know, why didn't they just get Charles Martin? I mean, he's in the movie already. Why didn't they just get him to play Mario? I think the thing is, like, I mean, here's my thing on the whole Charles Martin thing. And what he does with Mario is really good. But, again, he... He technically plays Mario, but he doesn't say a whole lot. He just goes, yeah! Wahoo! It's a me, Mario! Like, he, like that's pretty much the extent of of Mario's performance in those games. Like Charles Martinet doesn't really say a whole lot as Mario. He just says, you know, some catchphrases and he, and he does them well, but I, I, I think that'd be, I don't think that would translate over well to a movie per se. I don't think it would translate over to a movie because in a movie, unlike a video game where like, you don't really need a bunch of dialogue to have that, to have a fun experience. With a movie, that's a little bit different, considering you're not playing that character, you're watching them go on a journey, and so I don't... And again, I think... I think the character would need to speak, and I, I don't... I just... I, just, I don't know. I, I think when you're doing a movie on Mario, it's like... It, um, when you're doing a movie on Mario... It, like, it doesn't, like... It, it, it's sort of like with the whole Marvel thing. It's like, it's going to be different from the game. Like you're, it's going to be a, like you can't, there are some things you can do in the game that you can't really do in a movie. And so I'm fine with the whole Chris Pratt thing. I mean, but, but I mean, even that, I mean, granted it's illumination. I don't think it's going to be that great of a movie anyway. Cause I think illumination is way too hit or miss. And I can't really think of any movies of theirs that I loved. Uh, at least as far as I can think of. Yeah, so, I, I don't know. I don't think so. I, I don't, th I mean, this whole Mario, as Chris, the Chris Prize Mario thing, it's funny. Especially, again, especially given how he's now playing Garfield as well. Which, that one, I'm, um, like, the whole Garfield one is the one I'm more, like, what? Over? Because, like, the, like that's the one I'm more... Like, like scratching my head over. Cause like Chris Pratt. Okay. Yeah. He's very energized, very jumpy. Wahoo. Yeah. Uh, Garfield's not like that. Like at all. So like, I don't know, but regardless, again, the Chris Pratt's Mario thing doesn't really bother me. So whatever. <laughs> the next topic we're going to be talking about is one that again, I'm very, very, very concerned over. Uh, now, if you don't know, now, 
Now, obviously, if you know me, I didn't like Jurassic World Dominion. I th it might be the worst of the franchise, in my opinion. Uh, uh, uh. Wait a minute, this came out in, wait, June 10th. So wait, what? I, I, I didn't even realize this, but apparently... Like, there were a bunch of really stupid things that I was like, wait, what, over? Like, how, you know, how the director, Colin Trevorrow, compared Giganotosaurus to the Joker, saying, oh, he wants to watch the world burn. It's like, it's a dinosaur. What the, what are you talking about? But then there's another one where, where he talks about the Therizinosaurus. Like, where is... Yeah. Appar like, this is what Emily Carmichael said about this whole thing. Uh, she said, The big moment with Therizinosaurus. Colin was visually very excited, visually and directorially very excited about the design for that dinosaur. It looks really unique and and also has those Freddy Krueger-like claws. Then there was a moment in the development process when, Cal when Colin sat down and was like, it's actually a vegetarian. What, what do we do now? And the rest of us were like, it might have still been, ter it might still have its territory threatened. It might, it might be still formidable and dangerous. because Just because it's a vegetarian doesn't mean it's a pushover. And he was like, that's right. That's one of those moments where you're like, ah, scientific advisors. Why would you tell me that? This is, this was awesome. So. What he's basically saying is that it wasn't until the scientific advisors told him that Therizinosaurus was an herbivore. Like he, he, now if you don't know what Therizinosaurus is, um, if you don't know what there is in a source, it's here, let's look at, um, yeah, let's look at there is in a source. Now, granted, the, the, I'm go there's going to be a couple, like, I don't, they, they designed the, mo they designed this creature really weirdly. Uh, now this is what it looks like in the movie. And this is more or less closer to what it would have looked like in real life. Like, cause like, I don't know why they made its head. I don't know why they made, it, they made its head so huge, but for, but yeah, Colin Trevorrow didn't, apparently didn't even bother researching the dinosaurs until a scientific advisor told him what this thing was. And Again, this just once again proves why he was a wrong fit for Jurassic Park. Because it's just I'm just like why would you, why would you not know this or why would you not research this at all? It's like again, it's sort of I've I always go back to this, but it's when he said that, you know, the Giganotosaurus, you know, uh this is a dinosaur that just wants to watch the world burn. And I'm just like, well, then you don't get Jurassic Park then, because that's not how dinosaurs act. Like, that's, like, even in the first Jurassic Park, uh, you know, when, when, uh, Lex was scared of the Brachiosaurus, and she was like, don't let the monsters come over here, and he's like, they're not, and Alan Grant's like, they're, they're not, uh, they're, you know, oh no, they're not monsters, Lex, they're just animals, they just do what they do. And it's, that's, that's the thing, the dinosaurs aren't, the dinosaurs aren't, like the dinosaurs are not monsters. Like they're just they're they're just animals. And again, the fact that fucking Colin Trevorrow didn't bother researching Therizin and it's not even that hard. Like you just look at the I mean hell, you look at a Therizinosaurus and yeah, it has like wait, where 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 is a good wait, where is a good photo? I mean, you just look at this thing, and it doesn't look like a carnivore. Like, its head is so tiny, and it, like, it, it just, it looks like a plant eater's head. And again, 
it, but uh, and it, it what like I said, it just once again proves that he's more concerned over dumb spectacle over like he's more concerned with that than than trying to make sense. And, and ultimately, the dinosaur in the movie did end up being a vegetarian, but the fact that he didn't re do any research with it, he just saw a dinosaur and just went with it, it's just... Again, it just proves he doesn't know what he's doing with this franchise. He does not know what he's doing. And so, yeah, it's very... It's very disheartening. It's very disheartening to me, and it again... It shows in the quality of the films, because all three Jurassic World movies I thought sucked. So yeah, those are my thoughts on that whole thing. Uh, the next topic we're going to be talking about is uh, Christopher Nolan's new movie Oppenheimer. Now, this is probably my most anticipated movie of next year, because like every Christopher Nolan movie that he's made like every Christopher Nolan every movie that Christopher Nolan has made I've just loved except for following his first movie following I didn't really care for all that much but everything else from Memento Insomnia Batman Begins The Prestige The Dark Knight Inception The Dark Knight Rises Interstellar Dunkirk uh and Tenet I've loved all of those movies, they're so good. And so, like, and like, and like, hell, I might even say Tenet is is Christopher Nolan's most underrated film. Like that movie is like that is easily his most ambitious movie, and and the and it's like it's it is just insane. It's so insane, but it's so cool. To watch just to just watch everything unfold, and so Christopher Nolan, is, but apparently, you know, ever since Warner Brothers did that whole stupid day and date uh, theatrical release thing last year for HBO Max, where they sent pretty much almost all the movies to HBO Max, Christopher Nolan especially got pissed and was like, "You're gonna you're gonna treat your filmmakers like this? I'm out!" And he walked away from Warner Brothers and. And there was a big bidding war for whatever Christopher Nolan's next movie would be. Uh, there was a bit, yeah, there there was a big bidding war for his film, and like everyone, including like Warner Brothers, was interested. I think Netflix was interested. Apple was interested. Hell, even Netflix even said something that they would normally never do, and that is. We will give Christopher Nolan a full theatrical release if that's what he wants. Like, and Netflix never does that. They'll like put like those. They will put like their movies in like a few theaters for a very short amount of time just to qualify for Oscars, but they won't usually do full theatrical releases. So this was interesting, but ultimately Universal Pictures uh, uh, won the bidding war. I think what it came down to was they, I think, gave Christopher Nolan complete creative control over the film, uh, gave him a $100 million budget, and a guaranteed 100 days in theaters before it ever hits any streaming service or home media. And the cast for this... The, like, it became a meme as to how many cast members got into this film. Like... This is, like, this is literally the cast. Well, for one, Cillian Murphy, who plays Oppenheimer, but then the rest of the cast, Emily Blunt, Florence Pugh, Robert Downey Jr., Matt Damon, Rami Malek, Benny Safdie, Josh Peck, Josh Harnett, Dane DeHaan, Jack Quaid, Devin Bostick, Kevin Brana, and Alden Ehrenreich. I was like, holy shit, like... Like, this is amazing. Now, and what especially really got me excited was that Josh Peck was, was brought into, to, was brought in into this cast. And I love Josh Peck. I, like, I think he's one of the most underrated actors out there. 
and the fact that he's doing a Christopher Nolan movie, I don't, now granted, with this much of a cast, I don't expect all of them to have a lot of screen time, but the fact that, but this is in, but really think about this, this cast is, with a cast this huge, on a budget of a hundred million, which really by all accounts, I mean, yeah, that's a pretty big, that's a pretty big budget, but like a lot of, you know, the, like the Star Wars movies, the Marvel movies, uh, all the Disney remakes, they're usually more expensive than this. But I'm guessing a lot of these actors, especially Robert Downey Jr., were willing to take a pay cut in order to work with Christopher Nolan. But, I mean, because, like, look, again, Christopher Nolan, Christopher Nolan has that kind of influence. Like, people want to work with this guy. And so, what's... What is interesting is that during, uh, like, like, so wait, is this, uh, oh wait, nope, that's, that's, uh, the wrong, that is the wrong, uh, news source. Oppenheimer post-production. Whoopsies. Ah, there doesn't really seem to be a lot of... There doesn't really seem to be... Oh, here it is. Here it is. It's on, it was in Deadline. Once again, this has to do with Cine Europe. Let me find, uh, and this is, I'm guessing this is, they're talking about, like, this is Universal talking about, uh, their, their, uh, movies. And let me just find where, yeah, it said, Christopher Nolan further sent a message to thank exhibitors for their support and to reiterate that his incredible love for the big screen... He's in L.A. working on post for his next opus, Oppenheimer, which is led by Cillian Murphy and stars a starry ensemble cast. That one comes out next July in Nolan's preferred slot. Meaning... Like, so yeah, he's in post-production on this. Now, what I'm wondering... Like, I, 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 I kind of had this weird theory, you know, would, you know, Christopher Nolan get clearance to, like, detonate... At least the blast equivalent of a nuke, for because he likes to do things without many visual effects. So, like he used, he he tries to do things as practical as possible. So practical, in fact, that I still don't think Tenet deserved even a nomination for best visual effects because a lot of what you see on screen wasn't visual effects. They just did that for real. Not, and again, not even practical effects. Like for example, like there's a couple of scenes where like someone's fighting, uh, but the other person that they're fighting is, is fighting in reverse. That wasn't even like, there was no visual effects there, not even practical effects. That was just clever stunt work. And, but again, it was 2020, like Tenet only won best visual effects that year because there was barely any other competition. And plus, I've always said my problem with uh, how the Oscars choose their winners is that unlike their nomination process, which is great, they have the individual branches choosing the individual nomin like the individual nominees. When it comes to voting for the winners, every branch of the Academy votes for every category, meaning the majority of people voting for best visual effects are not part of the visual effects branch, meaning most of the people voting for best visual effects don't know anything about visual effects, and that's literally the only reason why Tenet won best visual effects, because, because again, one, most of the people were, that were voting for it don't even know anything about visual effects, and secondly, um... Uh, it was 2020, the worst year we've had for visual effects in forever... But, but I've always, but regardless, I've always kind of had this idea, like, what if Christopher Nolan, you know, like, what, because I think there's, like, a thing where it's, like, you know, you could detonate a bomb, but it's, like, not, like, a, it's the blast equivalent of a nuke, but it doesn't have, like, the radiation that a nuke would have. So, but if he's in post right now, I'm assuming he, they're not filming anymore, but... 
I don't know. And if they did film that thing, I think we would have heard... <sighs> heard about it by now. But, I don't know. Regardless, uh, I'm really excited for Oppenheimer. I think it's going to be great. I've loved every single Christopher Nolan movie to, up to this point. So, I have literally no reason to doubt this film. What are your thoughts on Oppenheimer? What do you think of the cast? And what do you think Christopher Nolan is going to do with this movie? Is it going to blow up Texas for the sake of cinema? Because, hey, Texas is gone, but did you see that shit on IMAX? It looked amazing. Whatever your thoughts may be, let me know in the comments below. Alright, now for our final topic of the day. Uh, and uh, I'm going to especially start, you know, playing a bit of this. Uh, Fall Guys is now on Steam, or, or not, 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 not Steam. Fall Guys is apparently for free on PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, Xbox, and the Epic Games Store. Uh, this goes, this, this comes from FallGuys.com, like their official website. Free for all is here, and with it we're bringing a bean-filled basket for Fall Guys goodies. Of, go of Fall Guys goodies, brown, brand new rounds, new costumes, a sparkly new season pass, availability on Nintendo Switch and Xbox, a shiny and shiny new versions for PlayStation 5 and the Epic Game Store. Yep, that's right. Strap, se strap seatbelts to your eyes because you won't believe what you're about to read. Uh, basically, I'm guessing they have like new rounds and whatnot, but again, my main thing is that apparently it's free now. And so... That's what I'm excited to, to see, like, uh, and, you know, yeah, we're gonna, fuck it, yeah, we're gonna play Fall Guys, fella, we're gonna play some Fall Guys, fellas, so, yeah, hold on, boop, yeah, there we go, yeah, I'm assuming, so, yeah, let's just play some Fall Guys, I know, granted, I've never played this before, oops, Escape back. So yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and play this. Now, Grant, I don't know any of. I, I've never pl like I said, I've never played Fall Guys before, so we will have to see how this works out. But yeah, let me know if you guys want me to play some more games on the Hannah Cast. Uh, yeah, let me know. This could be fun. Let me go see if I can get... I might go, go get myself a drink. Hold on. Now again, keep in mind, I'm not a gamer, so I don't, so I don't know a lot of the country. Like, I know it's WASD, but I never gate crash. And I'm assuming <clears throat> I'm assuming. Oh shit. I'm assuming... Oh shit, well, I'm gonna lose. Yeah, I'm gonna lose. I suck at this game! I suck so bad at this- fuck!
Ah, shit. Yeah, I'm gonna return the main menu, because, like, what am I gonna... I guess I got wristband. Punk band. Yeah. Actually, for one, maybe I should turn off. I know I think I had, like, mostly depth of field on. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't do that. Why? All right, let's try this again. Oh. Yeah, like, because I know this is like pretty big back in 2020. Um, I know this is pretty big in 2020, right? But like, this came out like right before Among Us. I mean, granted, I think Fall Guys and Among Us were still around, but it's like they didn't get popular until like that era in 2020. Okay, I need to remember. Wasdiff to move around, space to jump, and control to, you know, control to die. Oh my god. Oh, I'm gonna fucking lose. No! God! Ha ha! No! Ah, oh, fuck! Oh god, I'm so stupid. No! Are you serious? Ha ha! All right. Ah, oh, fuck. Shit! Oh! Ah, oh, fuck! No! Ah! Fuck! God! I can't fucking move! Uh, I suck at gaming. No! Ah! <laughs> ah! Fuck! God, this is so hard. Fucking... I'm not gonna make it. Fuck it. Fuck this. Fuck, fuck it all. God. I hate keyboard and mouse. I hate keyboard and mouse so much. I hate, oh wait, right, but ah, uh, man.
No, I got like what? There's no. I I gotta I gotta actually play the game. Oh, I guess next up is the fucking uh is the Assassin's Creed guy. I don't know his fucking name. But that's the thing. I'm terrible at keyboard and mouse when it comes to games like this. Something like Jurassic World Evolution 2 I can do on keyboard and mouse, but something like this, I need like a actual controller. Maybe I should get myself like a new controller. Like a control a controller to actually use it on this computer. Like USB or something. Because my god, I, I suck at again, I I'm so terrible at keyboard and mouse. Oh boy, this again. God, the wa the WASD keyboards, like they're not like the W isn't even completely parallel to the S. DoorDash. Hey, that's a that's a fucking that's the fucking game. Oh, I'm in the front row. No, I can't fucking move! What the fucking move? Ah! Ah! I'm gonna lose. I went. I was literally in the front of the row, and I'm. Fuck! I can't fucking win! I fucking hate WASD keyboards! I hate it so much! You dumb motherfuckers! Ah! Fuck it! Ah! <laughs> Wait, I just realized I could have just. Oh my god, I could have used my mouse to... Instead of actually turning? I could have... A oh my god. I could have used my mouse to turn instead of the fucking WASD keyboards. Oh my god, I'm so fucking stupid. I'm so fucking stupid. I'm sorry if anyone- Oh my god, I could've actually just- I could've just used my mouse to turn instead of the WASD keyboards. Or is- or I guess the ASD keyboards. So all I really need to do is just... W, space, and control. God, and I was in the front as well. I had every reason to win this. I'm not a gamer, guys. I'm not a gamer. Oh boy, DoorDash. We... Where am I? Ah, oh, 
shit. Okay. I'm doing a lot better now. Oh my god, thank This guy this guy poor this guy <laughs> poor this this guy <laughs> Oops There we go Yeah so we can see all the names God Thank God I can use the mouse to turn. Run and balance across rows of seesaws to reach the finish line. Oh God. Oh shit, I'm in the front row. You mother, you fucking idiots. No, no, no. Ah, fuck, I'm not going to make it. God, I don't take losing well. I fucking hate it. If there's one thing I like, uh, if there's one thing I'm more passionate about, like, I I hate losing more than I like winning, all right? Losing fucking sucks. Like, no. I'm quitting this one. Because I'm not gonna fucking spectate. God, I was doing so well, but... Oh, uh, seriously, people. Fuck losing. Oh, oh, 
Oopsies. 242. Okay, I might call it quits at around three. I might call it quits at around three. Actually, let me just, there we go. Just so I know, I just, I had to turn my Google home, my Google, uh, my Google Nest Hub to face me so I know what time it is. Oh shit, this again. Oh, but, you know, it shouldn't be as bad if I'm, because a grant, because keep in mind, I did do a lot better uh, with the mouse than I did trying to navigate with, wa with just wazd. Or, or just wazd. Oh cool, I'm in, well, no, I'm in second row. Ah, fuck. Fucking go! How about how is anyone supposed to get through this thing? Fuck! God damn it! Fucking hate this level! Fuck! No! No! Stop fucking falling, guy! God. This is so awful. I fucking hate losing. Uh, 
I should call these segments Christian sucks at games. Because holy shit, this is like I'm literally the worst at this. I think I might go one more round. Like this is the, probably the last one until I just, until I go. So, uh, yeah. I'm willing to, I'm willing to, I'm gonna die in the first round. Uh, oh God. Oh, excuse me. camera's just still. Ah, oh, man, I'm in the back. Fuck! Why didn't I just... Ah! What? What was that? Ah, oh, fuck. I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it. I'm not gonna make it. Fuck it! Ah! Ooh. Fuck this game! Fuck this game! Thank goodness it's for free, because I- God, I would have felt like I got my- Because I fucking hate losing! Alright guys, well, I- yeah, I've been recording for over an hour, so that's enough content for you guys. Fuck, man, I- like, that's way too hard. I fucking hate losing. So, uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on all these topics here? Uh, goddamn. I really fucking suck at games. What other games do you want me to play? Do you want me to play some Jurassic World Evolution 2? Uh, do... I don't, like, or what else, or, again, what other, like... Well, like, do you want me to play maybe Grand Theft Auto 5 or something along those lines? Let me know in the comments below. And I think that'll do it, like I said, that'll do it for the Hanacast, everybody. Don't forget to uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, 
support me on Ko-Fi, go to ChristianHanna.com, follow me on at Twitter at the Hannacast, and buy my merch at ChristiansReviews.Creator-Spring.com. That'll do it for now, guys. Uh, see ya.